All right, February 24th at Piedmont Open IB Middle School. It's going to be an amazing one. Ashe's second show and the main event, this guy right here, the ageless one. You see it right there on his name, Caprice Coleman. He's going to be taking on the Pan-African World Diaspora Champion, Shug D. And uh, it's going to be a great match just because of the competitors. But also, it's been a little bit of fire happening lately. Uh, Caprice, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, and, and talking about this, this event. Uh, first off, I want to say that uh, your story on the Ashe YouTube page with the 24-7 uh, was amazing. Everybody go check that out to see kind of a day in the life of, of you and how you get prepared for an event. But I want to use this to kind of get inside of your head. Uh, Shug D is somebody that admits openly that uh, he watched you. Uh, you were somebody that influenced him. And yet after the first Ashe show, when you interviewed him, he got a little testy with you. I thought that was a little bit interesting. Can you explain maybe some of your relationship dynamics uh, with him before you guys kind of got into that little tiff, I guess, a, a backstage when you were interviewing him? Yeah, man. Um, and thank you for having me on this show, Chris Lee. I have a lot of respect for you and all that you've done in wrestling and your professional career. Um, you are professional, it's professional, man. And I just want to let you know that uh Ashe has has uh made a big deal getting you to be with Ashe and now I'm not just saying that when you think of professional people uh you want somebody that is professional as you but to have somebody that is professional as you and for you to be a former wrestler a former wrestling fan a former participant in wrestling it just puts the icing on the cake because like you get it you know and so uh it, it's a big deal for Ashe to have you here and I just want to make sure that you know that I believe that Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, with Shook D, Shook D is somebody, man, that uh, I watched him in this sport when I was at NWA Wildside. It's a, it's a promotion in, in Georgia uh, that a lot of wrestlers came from. R-Truth, AJ Styles, um, JC Daz, Jason Cross, uh, it's a lot of Jay Phoenix, Shannon Moore, uh, Christian York, uh, Joey Matthews. A, a lot of stars came. Uh, out of uh, NWA Wildside, and it was kind of like the WCW's, uh, kind of like the power plant. Uh, they had guys like um, Mark Jimtrak, uh, Bob Sapp, uh, a lot of these guys go through uh, NWA Wildside. Amazing Red, uh, the Ring, uh, Risco Brothers, so many guys that came through. Matt Seidel, I, I just I don't want to miss names, but Jimmy Rave. Um, a lot of these guys in Egypt in NWA Wild Side is a place that I was for a while that they had weekly TV and you could watch it on table on cable television. And um, my name then was Ice, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I was young, cocky, um, outgoing, high flyer, risk taker. Uh, I was also like a hybrid. You know, the further I got into it, I, I gained a lot of strength and I could do the power moves and I could do the high flying moves. And all and NWA Wildside kind of made me who I am because when I got there before NWA Wildside, I was like the high flyer everywhere I went. You know, I was like, oh man, watch Caprice Coben. He could do a 450, he could do a moonsault, he could do a gainer, he could do all this stuff. And then you get there and you got AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. You know, you get there and you got Jason Cross, you got uh all these high flyers there. So it's like what makes you stand out. You know, and so then I got in a feud one day and they handed me the microphone and I was I've been called a preacher since I was 14 years old. So I'm very comfortable communicating with people and they gave me the microphone and I just went off and it was like, uh, that's your thing, you know. And so I started talking and they gave me the microphone. They gave me the chance. They would give me things to talk about. And it kind of grew from there. So I was able to grow uh, my character, myself, expand, expand myself and grow myself, mature on NWA Wild Side and through NWA Wild Side, I was able to get a lot of opportunities with uh, WWE, TNA, uh, and Ring of Honor. Uh, but also, like I'm saying, you could turn into and you could see that and you could see that progression. And Shook D admitted that he was one person that he would turn on cable TV and he would watch NWA Wild Side and he was a huge fan mm -hmm. of ICE, you know, and uh, and that's what made him want to wrestle. And in that, to me, that's uh, that's the big deal. That's that's admirable, and I respect that, you know. And Shug D came into wrestling, and I remember being at a seminar that I was uh, teaching, um, a Ring of Honor seminar that I was part of, 
And he said that, man, and, and, and I felt it. You know, I felt it. And to see what Shook D has done um, to me is tremendous for somebody that, you know, watched me when I got into wrestling watching people. You know, I found that one person that I was like, man, I could be like that guy. And 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 I became a wrestler. Uh, that guy for me, I could be like that guy was, was Brian Pillman, you know. And so um, I, I watched wrestling and when I, I watched wrestling as a fan and growing up seeing the Rocky Kings and Dusty Rhodes and all that. But then when I saw Brian Pillman, I was like, wait a second, I can do this, you know. And so that was his thing um, for me. And so to me, that's an honor, man. And but that was man, that was that was over 20 years ago. I'm not that man anymore. But at the same time, when he's uh, kind of coming at you, I know that it's the heat of the moment. He he just uh, was a part of an eight man tag. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they lost Team Georgia versus North Carolina. Great match. Great moments for Ashe. Some stuff. Uh, kind of went viral on a wrestling scene. I got a chance to swag surf with D'Lo. It's a great moment, but Suge isn't feeling great because his team didn't win. And somebody who says they looked up to you but came at you that way, um, you know, how, how did that kind of make you feel? Because it felt like you guys kind of had a, a good relationship, and yeah. now it's a little, little contentious. I, I was taken back a little bit, and the reason why is because, you know, they call me Unk now. You know, and I used to be like, man, I ain't nobody. I ain't no aunt. Um, um, look at me. I think that's a little yeah. disrespectful, man. Yeah, I think that's a little I look, disrespectful. I look better than all of y'all, and you know, da da da. You know, but but I get it. And it basically, what it means is like I've been around long enough to where a lot of these guys they look up to me. I'm their mentor. I'm truthful. I, I don't bite my tongue. I'm honest. Um, I'm brutally honest sometimes. And but but not to hurt feelings is to encourage people because. I'm not going to waste my time with you if 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 um if I don't feel that you would take the advice I give you and run with it. And there there's stars that are making a living right now from advice that I gave them. And and so I thank God for that. And so Suge is one of those guys that, you know, I'm I'm brutally honest with. I talk to him and when, when I talk to him, I don't hold back because people didn't hold back on me. The thing they did with me though that I didn't like is they would tell me what I'm missing. They wouldn't tell me what I had. You know, mm -hmm. and so I'm the type of person to say, hey, I'm going to tell you what you got, but I'm also tell you how to tweak some stuff and tell you what you're missing. That way you you can look at it, but sometimes your strength can cover those weaknesses up. And so I, I'm that type of guy that, hey, coach, how was the match? How was the song? So oh, it was good, but this, this thing, da, 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 this really stood out. This was awesome. But if you tweak this, da, 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 I'm that guy. And so I've earned that respect in the locker room. I've earned that respect in the business. I've earned that respect as a producer on big stages. And so when I talk to people, that's the way I talk. And so when I told Suge, I was like, Suge, man, you know, the, the match was great. It was a tough loss. And I knew he was upset about it. And then uh, I, I told him, I said, well, you know, you got that big title now. That's a huge deal. That's a world title. I respect the the Pan-African diaspora title, diaspora title. I, I keep saying diaspora. Um, it's not a disrespect. It's, it's, just, it's just my head. It's locked in my head. But um, I respect the title so much. Mm -hmm. And and I, I was like, man, I get it. You're, you're world champion now. You have a lot to focus on because there's an automatic target on your back. Maybe this match wasn't at the forefront, you know, of your mind because in that match, you, you got people on your team um, that are watching you, that want right. to see what your weakness is. That, I right. get it. I get it. You know, that's, that's where I was coming from. That even Owen Knight is already saying he wants Shook D and then he's teaming with Shook D and D. You get what I'm saying? All this stuff. And so uh, and everybody, the contender, they, they want to get a pin on the Pan-African champion. Like, that's the deal. And so I can see how you could have your mindset on protecting yourself and you're not the best team player in those situations. That's what I was saying. And he took it in offense of that. He's always on guard all the time. So this and that. I get it, man. It was the heat of the moment. Um, I was taken back a little bit, but I wasn't really offended. Um, it, it because I get it in the heat of the moment. There's a lot of things that happen. A, a, a lot of friendships are ended that way. Somebody says something that hurts somebody's feelings and they're not talking anymore. But you have to take that that situation at hand and sometimes take the person out of that situation or look at it through that person's eyes. And in that situation, I understood where he was coming from. And um, we agreed to do a show together to sit down and talk about. And, and I thought that was going to be it. Yeah. Well, speaking of hurt feelings, I don't know if this did hurt your feelings, but how did, did it feel when he kind of essentially called you washed up, essentially said that you gave up and, and that because you're on the commentary booth, 
that it's all over for you. I, I personally felt that because it's like, hey, I, I could have a couple more matches in me. <laughs> I, I don't know, but uh, but you you also had to have a great opportunity to expand your your skill set and your career. That doesn't mean that your your wrestling career is necessarily over. It doesn't mean that you can't still become a world champion, which we'll talk about that uh, in just a bit. But how did that make you feel when he said that to you? Hey, I feel he misunderstands. It should be tries to do commentary too. He tries to do everything that I'm doing. Uh, here's the deal. I'm versatile. You know, I'm, I'm an athlete. I'm a communicator. I can do whatever I need to do. I, I can manage, I can produce, you know, I've been in this sport long enough that I can have my hands in a little bit of everything. Mm. And, and I got an opportunity to make a living talking about the sport that I participate in. You know, 48 years, I'm 46, I'm 46 years old. Yeah. And to be, to be in position to where you know you can't do this stuff for the rest of your life, whether you feel like you can or, or you look like you can, you can't do this stuff the rest of your life. And so I was given the opportunity to do commentary one time and the producer at that time thought I did a phenomenal job and they continued to give me opportunities doing it. And there was another chance that I was given to learn on television how to be a commentator, to be a color commentator. And all I'm doing is giving advice or, or, or painting the picture of professional wrestling from the experience that I've had, from things that I've seen, from the years that I've been in the sport. And yeah. so, like, it, it really fit me. And, and I like it. And, and I like the fact that I'm the type of commentator that I tell the people why they're in the ring. You know, I, I tell this the, the audience, this is why this person is in the ring. This is why this person, this is who this person is. This is why I'm not one of those uh, commentators that are, that are making fun of the athletes that are putting the athletes down, that are making jokes, that's, that's ha-ha. Oh, I'm witty, and I could tell jokes, but I'm not take, telling jokes to take away from the athlete inside the ring because I believe if you're inside of that ring, you're putting your life on the line, and you've earned to be inside that ring. There are people whose lives would change inside of that ring, and so I tell that story. I'm, the, I'm your conscience. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you what to believe. It's up to you whether you believe it or not. And so I respect that job. I honor that job. And so I don't look at it as like, oh, look at you now. You're a commentator. How many other commentators do you see that was able to perform and then walk into the stage? I'm like, I'm almost like a Shaquille O'Neal or Charles Barkley. How many other NBA uh, athletes, when they retire, they just retire and they go to other stuff. I'm able to go into the next field to show yeah. other people this is where it come from. And I'm also able to, to participate with a lot of these athletes. So some of these athletes that I'm talking about, I've been in the ring with. I've been in the ring with them. I've been in the ring with their trainers. I know what type of mindset they have. I know what they do. So it's a gift, you know? Yeah. And so th this world has to get out of thinking that people are one trick ponies or you can only do one thing and one thing well. If you're versatile, you be versatile. I, I tell my students, I say, if you wanna wrestle, wrestle. But if you're in college and you're going to school for something, Find out how you can turn that into also a career in wrestling. If you're an editor, become a, an editor for a wrestling promotion. If you are a physical fitness, uh, inter training, physical therapy, massage therapist, chiropractor, there's mm -hmm. something you can do behind the scenes in wrestling. You're holding the camera, whatever. You can have multiple facets, and, and that's yes. what I teach, and that's who I am. And so it, don't, don't get mad at me uh, because you don't think outside the box like I do felt like you're about to go into a sermon right there. I, I felt, felt like it was Sunday morning just, just for a second. Um, I, you know when, when you're doing commentary, you know this. And for the fans who may not know or understand, you just don't go to that booth, put on the headset, and just start yeah. talking. There's tape study. Uh, there's interviews that's happening, like this interview right now. Exactly. That's helping me prepare for February 24th. There's all kinds of things that goes into it. But also another thing is you get a front row seat to basically study and look at the games of all these different wrestlers that you could possibly get in the ring with. Bro, How I'm, do you think that commentary and being in that booth has changed the way that you've approached uh, being a pro wrestler? And how do you think it gives you a leg up on February 24th against Shook D? I'm a king sitting on the throne, getting paid to scout my competition. Mm. I got a front row seat of everybody that I want to watch. I know your ins. I know your outs. I know what you move. I know what positions you can't move in. I know your lateral movements. I know your front movements, side movements. I know your adjustments. I know your transitions. Mm -hmm. I know I study you. While I'm watching you, I'm studying. And, and that's, that's who I am. I get a front row seat to study my competition. 
I know how long you can go before you're frustrated. I know what frustrates you. I know what situations frustrate you. I can get the referee to call something on you that make you mad, but then I could take that frustration to confuse you in the ring. Yeah. Like I, I have the best seat in the house. This business can harden a lot of people. It can make people kind of cynical. It could, uh, after a while, kind of change your personality if you if you let it. And uh, I've only known you for about about ten years or so. Uh, from when I started wrestling back in 2012, but I feel like I met you in 13 or 14. Um, and you've been the same guy uh, the entire time. And you, you're still positive. Uh, you still have a great outlook on life. And here you are at age 46, still with things to accomplish in wrestling. You've been passed over. Uh, you've been looked over. You've been underestimated. What keeps you positive every single day to maintain who Caprice Coleman is? Jesus Christ, man. I, I'm, I'm not going to say I do this, I do this, and I have this mantra or whatever like I do. Um, I'm saved. And, and and it's the Christ inside of me. I don't care if you mute this or however part, but you can't ask me. Um, how. You can't ask me how I got to where I'm at and me not be able to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, That's my answer. I feel you. Um, feel like that got, got you a little bit emotional. What are, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Nah, it's it's just the truth, man. There's there's so much. Uh, I shouldn't be here right now. I could have died a long time ago. Uh, injury wise, mental wise, suicide wise, mm -hmm. um, so many things that could have happened that that kept me. That could have kept me from being where I'm at now and to know that it's only the grace of God that has me here. And it's not, oh, oh, he's got a genie in a bottle. No, it's, it's the faith that I have knowing that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, lives and, and he can live inside of your heart. And I vow to live for him. And in that, you know, there are so many things that I'm able to put aside There are things I don't participate in. There are things that that I'm able to encourage because I believe it inside my heart. If he can if he can heal me from addictions and, and things that that didn't make the camera that that protected me from the camera from ruining my career if he can heal me from those things and 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 keep me in my right mind and i'm 46 years old i have no injuries i'm married with children i've been married for 20 21 years bro like i i have a 19 year old i have a 14 year old um i'm i'm living the life that i was that i wanted to live uh, mm -hmm. this is not anything I've done. I mean, I put in work, I put in work, but just like you said, bro, those people that over, they tried to wait me out. You can't wait somebody out if God is on your side, bro. And, and, and that's the only thing It's like that grace that said, don't give up. But, but while you're waiting, stand and, 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 and standing, it isn't just standing still, it's standing firm in your faith, it's standing still in what you believe in, not selling out. I've been given opportunities to do stuff on, on WWE, but, but there are things that I'm just not going to do. Because I know who I am. You're not going to put me in a character uh, to, to be a, a rapper or a thug just to get a spot uh, to see how good I do it and to transition to other things. Because if you turn on the TV uh, for me to be something that I'm not, that person's going to see that. But then it's like, what kind of what am I telling people on Sunday morning not to sell out and I go out and do the same thing just because you're offered a situation to do that. And so I've held my ground and, and being able to hold my ground, it hasn't skyrocketed my career. But I look at where I'm at now, and, and my career has been a slow rise uh, ever since. Even with commentary, I'm getting paid more now um, on the contract that I'm at now. I get paid more to do commentary than I've ever got paid to wrestle. I travel the world doing it, you know. And so there are a lot of my friends that had a skyrocket career, and, and then their career is over, and they're trying to scramble to see what to do next. And, and they find situations, and, and I pray for everybody to eat. But but God has allowed my career to be a slow rise to where I, I know it's not over yet. And to have a transition into the transition that I have now, I almost feel like the, the black Jerry Lawler, you know, that, that <laughs> get it. You, you know, like Jerry Lawler wrestled for years. But the great thing about Jerry Lawler is he was one of the greatest commentators in the world. Mm -hmm. And his secret was he was able to heal, man. Like I, I'm doing commentary mostly. And so my body's able to heal. That's why I'm in great shape. 
Mm -hmm. um, because I can take care of my body now. And so uh, all these things just fell in place, man. If you would have told me this 15 years ago, this is what I'd be. Oh, no, man, I'm I'm headlining WrestleMania. Oh, no, man, I'm doing this, you know, but, but God knows the plan. And, and sometimes you have to adjust to it and, and knows that his plan is better. His plan is the best. And uh, and that's what I've done. One of the things that's been uh, interesting for me as I am getting closer to 40, I turned 38 this year uh, and that that 4-0 seems a little a little scary. Um, but I think the closer I get to it, the more I'm accepting of it. And also the more I realize that it doesn't mean that it's the end of my story for anything. Right. Um, you are 46, as you said earlier, yeah. and and four years away from from turning 50 and you don't look like it. You look like you're probably younger than me, actually. <laughs> um, but you what the thing that has eluded you is that world championship. Um when you sit back and, and think about that and you, you think about the opportunity uh, that you have in Charlotte, the place that you live and lay your head uh, every single day against Shug D, somebody that you're close with. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? And does that do you feel like you have to adjust your game so you don't overthink yourself while you're in the ring, understanding the opportunity that you have? No, man. Um, I, I think, uh, first of all, the like, age thing, I think my fountain of youth is spirituality, health and fitness. Your, your spirit man, getting your spirit, spirit man aligned uh, with the father and then uh, watching what you put inside your body and then telling your body what to do, exercise, health and fitness uh, and all that to me has been my fountain, fountain of youth. And, and it's kept me young. You know, um, there are a lot of people that have parted themselves out. And they look every bit of their age or worse, you know, mm -hmm. just because of what they put their body through. But I really believe my body is a temple, and um, and, and and it's not and it's not mine, you know, it, it's it's not mine. And so I take care of it the best that I can, and that's been my testament. And that's what's kept me young. Um, as far as this opportunity, man, you you know, I take it as it is, and I'm not nervous. Um, I've, I've had opportunities in the past before, and it's kind of like you take it and you, and you make your best out. I will be nervous. You know, I still get the butterflies uh, in the nervousness before matches and the, 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 the anxiousness uh, and all of that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not looking at this like it's nothing. But to me, it's like here it is. What you're going to do with it? What are you going to do with this opportunity? Um, I'm in it, I'm in my hometown. Um, and everybody knows, oh, you've been overlooked and this and that. And, and a lot of times, you know, they're right. But the overlooking is like, I feel I've been standing up for the culture way before the, the culture's been standing up for themselves. Mm. And I'm not the only one. And, and that's that was my frustration. If you watch the interview, uh, which should be, that was my frustration is that, you know, now uh, the culture uh, it's, it's at a point to where they're like, you know, you, you got every bit of everybody doing everything and, and they're black, you know, and but we couldn't do that. You know, we, we were putting up if there was two or three of us on the show is like, oh, we got enough black guys, you know, or Tell me about it. You, had, you, had to, <laughs> you had to stand out or you had to be like a star uh, or, or something different about you. And then it was like, oh, he's athletic. Oh, they're all athletic. Or all that, but then you could have somebody else that's that's white doing the exact same thing, and it's the greatest thing they've ever seen in the world. And all they did was change the tone, color tone, you know. And so I get it, and I've seen it. And so, but then I was just like, you know what? If that's the way it is, I see it, and I've been told I'm 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 too small, then I was too big, and then I'm too talkative, then I don't talk enough, and then I'm too boisterous, I'm too. But then you get these guys on TV. They never told Ric Flair that. They never told Hulk Hogan that, you know. But but I'm the one that that's that's too cocky, you know. And so uh, I, I get it, you know. And so for me to have this opportunity, this world title to me is the real world title because it's the world title that I protected for years before it even became a title. I protected it saying that, you know, I'm more than what you're going to put me in this box for. Yeah. Do we rap? Do we dance? I'm not one to say, oh, we don't rap. We don't. I'm going to let you know this right here, uh, Chris Lee. There are some of us that rap and rap well. There's some that dance and dance well. There are some that that shuck and jive and shuck and jive well. There are some that are educated. There are some that 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 um can move. There's some that have all different types of talents. You see all, all of them coming out now. 
And so we do all that, but don't try to tell me what I do. Let me show you what I do. Let me show you my gift and respect my gift. How come I can't be the next million dollar man? How come I can't be the next nature boy? How come I can't be the next Stone Cold? How come I can't be the next star that you see in all these other guys because you don't see the same thing in me? That was my thing. Give me a talking role. Give me an educated role. Give me a role to where you look at me and you say, oh, man, this guy is somebody. This guy is somebody to respect, not somebody that that you want to laugh at or somebody in. But there are guys you could be funny with. That just wasn't my role. You see what I'm saying? That yeah. wasn't who I am. And I'm not going to bend over backwards to be that guy, to become that guy. This is who I am. I'm Caprice Coleman. I've been a talker. I'm an athlete. I'm a hybrid athlete. I'm educated. I know what I'm talking about. And I feel what I'm talking about. And I can make your brand look good. This is who I am. Oh, can you? But can you? They said, can you be a preacher on TV and you judge everybody? That's not what preachers do. Yeah. You know, and so and so so I protected my part of the culture for years. That's why I'm at where I'm at now. Where said, well, you never reached this, 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 and that. Yeah, because there were some places I wouldn't go because I know they wouldn't protect me. They would put me in a situation where here's the here's the trap. They say, and it's also the trap that I feel Shook D fell into. They'll put mm-hmm. you in a situation where they will pay you enough money to where you know you're not making that money anywhere else. And then they feel like because they're paying you that money, that take away that money, then you don't know what to do. So you do anything to keep that money. So it's like, how much does it cost to buy you to make you do whatever I want you to do? Mm. They pay should be a certain amount of money and turn him to what pineapple Pete. Wow. So you you showing me, you showing me that that all I have to do is pay you to change you. Caprice Coleman can't be bought. To me, that's the culture. To me, that's the culture I've stood up for. To me, that's the culture I protected. Let me be me. You don't tell me who I am. I will say I have to give you your flowers because there's a point in time when um, after I went to college, I kind of fell out of love with wrestling a little bit. And then when I got back, I started seeing these two guys from Charlotte, North Carolina t- teaming together. And uh, here in North Carolina, seeing that. Uh, they're both black and and just uh, they talk well, they move well, they look really good. And I went to this uh, event at the Greensboro Coliseum in 2011, and that was one of the final straws. I said, I am going to go train, become a pro wrestler. It was you and, uh, and Cedric Alexander and uh, also saw the Bravado Brothers on that show and some others. Uh, and that really uh, gave me the fuel to get into the pro wrestling world uh, like I wanted to when I was young. And here's another thing, too. I will say this. Outside of pro wrestling, I don't think I've ever told you this. Um, when I was, when we were both working at AML, you're the first AML champion. Um, and I think it was the night that you either won, uh, but it was in Winston Salem. And there was a moment after you uh, won. And uh, for folks who don't know, I used to uh, be an interviewer for AML. And there was a moment where you were just dead tired. You're in the corner, you're laying down, you're talking to the crowd. I'm interviewing you, and then your wife comes up from behind and just touches your shoulder, and you're like, ooh, that's my baby right there. Because you knew. You knew the touch. And you, you knew what it was. And I, I, I thought about that moment, and I was like, man, that's that's amazing. I think I'd just gotten married at that point uh, with Carissa, and I was like, man, I want that. So uh, just know that I look up to you, and uh, I appreciate everything you've done in wrestling. I appreciate everything that you do in real life and how you're true to yourself. But before we get out of here, Let's sell some tickets. People who are in and around Charlotte, why should they come see you versus the Pan-African World Diaspora Champion, Shug D, on February 24th uh, at the uh, Piedmont Ivy Middle School? Why should they be there for that? (laughs) It's been a long, long time (laughs) coming. But a change's gonna come. Let me tell you something. For a long time, I've been waiting on an opportunity to show the world who I am, to show the world who Caprice Coleman is without having to worry about them uh, contaminating me, without them tainting me, without them pushing me and making me do something I don't want to do. I am the culture. I am the culture. And I'm not saying I'm the culture, put the culture on my back. Is that I represent what this title stands for is letting me be me, 
Who am I? I'm the show stopping, crowd popping, body rocking, pulse pounding, heart racer, the handsome face heartbreaker. I'm the man with the style, the grace, the shape, the face, the innovator, the crowd motivator, the commentator, complicator. I'm the man that's more devastating than the space modulator. Plus, I have ties with the creator, but I've also moved on. I've also grown. I've also gotten better. I've also evolved. I'm the ageless one. I have a rookie body, a veteran mind, and a silver tongue, which means I'm the coach inside of the ring that could tell you what to do while I'm showing you what to do. I'm 46 years old. Do I look it? No. Do I feel it? No. But my mind knows about it. So the experience I've had, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. You can't put something in front of me that I haven't seen. 28 years in this sport, I've seen it all. So bring it. Bring what you want to bring and give me this opportunity. Shook D, you're a champion. That's cool. You know, but how did you win that title? Who did you beat? You beat Trish Adore. <sighs> That's a big deal. So now that title's a big deal. So you're giving me a big deal opportunity to show the world who I am. I want to carry the culture. I want to carry the culture. Why? Because I want the culture's head to be a head that's somebody that won't sell out. Somebody that can't be bought. Somebody that doesn't do whatever they do, what whatever they're told to do for a dollar. Mm. I want to be the real culture world champion. And, be, and I have to beat you to do it. I respect you. I admire you. And, 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 and I congratulate you on what you've done. But on the 24th, you face the ageless one. And you've given me an opportunity that I've been waiting for my whole life. I've been sitting on that throne watching people, knowing that I'm better than them, but just waiting on my opportunity to prove it. I get that chance in Charlotte, in front of my friends, in front of my family, in front of my congregation, and in front of you, and in front of the locker room, and in front of the stream, in front of all of this, to show the world that Caprice Coleman is still the coldest brother alive today. And that is a bar. Get your tickets right now. AsheWrestling.com, A-S-E. That's how you spell it, wrestling.com. Piedmont Open IB Middle School. It's going to go down Black History Month. Caprice Coleman, Shug D, and I'll be on commentary along with Kazim. And, uh, man, I'm excited to see us. Caprice, thank you so much for joining me today. All right, thanks for having me, man. I look forward to do more of these as champions.